Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to Navideo. This right here is going to be something completely different. I have never done something like this before. Here's a little introduction and after that we are going to cut right to the main topic for the next few days, okay? So, it was Thursday, so a few days ago. And I was just stumbling upon something in the wide realms of the internet, okay? It was a little theorem, a little difference formula for a certain mathematical constant. It has to do with the integral over the reciprocal of the gamma function. I thought, okay, well, easy enough, let's, let's try it out. It really doesn't look too hard. <laughs> but then, five days later, I finally got it to work out after five days. In a normal case, if I stumble upon a problem and it doesn't work out in the first hour, I just think, yeah, fuck off. I'm going to do it a different day. But this thing really bugged me because I was so close to getting it done on the first day, on one of the first tries, but something was always missing. And this is where the story really began. And it was, uh, it was terrible. I pretty much spent the whole weekend and each and every day trying to figure this out. I put like 60 hours into solving this thing and it was so annoying but so much fun. We are going to talk about the difference formula of the Franzen Robinson constant in the next few days and that's going to be a three or four part series so stay tuned. It's going to be a wild ride of failure a story of failure and an epic win in the end and also Ramanujan stuff. So yeah, let's go ahead and get started. Here it goes. So the Franzen Robinson constant. What is that exactly? Well, it's being denoted by F and I stumbled upon this thing on math stack exchange or something it was just there in, in the recommendation somewhere and then I was looking at Wikipedia and there was a certain difference formula. So like I said this thing right here is the integral over the reciprocal of the gamma function and supposedly this right here is going to evaluate to the number e okay plus some integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative x over pi squared plus the natural log squared of x integrated with respect to x. And I thought, well, it, it doesn't look too hard to prove, okay? It looks like something that you could do maybe uh, using integration by parts or something, or maybe we are going to get rid of this right here, the reciprocal of the gamma function, because this doesn't look too healthy at the moment. Maybe we can turn this into something completely different. And at first, Wikipedia states a little approximation. That's the first thing I actually found, okay? So if you take a look at this thing right here, we can actually underestimate this integral right here using the integral criteria, okay? That's an integral approximation. This thing right here is basically greater than the sum from zero to infinity of um, one over gamma of k. Okay, I hope this does make sense if you take a look at the graph of some certain function, okay? The integral is basically the whole area under this thing, but we can underestimate it using Riemann sums, okay? Or just sums in general. So all those rectangles added together is less than, well, this integral representation in itself. Okay, and this thing right here is basically, um, yeah, nothing but um, sum from zero to yeah, um, from zero to infinity in this case. I'm terribly sorry. I totally forgot that. Of uh, one over k minus one factorial. Okay, and this is basically e. So that's approximately e right here. You can make a change of index and add a one to it. Blah blah blah. And then you are going to be left with e. So this thing right here, this integral in itself is a bit bigger than e. Okay, just what we have here. So this integral is nothing but e plus some error term, you could say, plus some estimation thing. Okay, so this makes perfect sense to me and then I tried evaluating this thing. And one of the things that came to my mind was to get rid of this reciprocal right here, okay? This is more of a storytelling, it's more of a math snack, you could say, okay? So <laughs> the Franzen Robinson constant is nothing but. If we take a look at the reflection formula of Euler, okay? If we have gamma of x times gamma of one minus x. 
we are going to be left with pi over the sine of pi times x. And this is what we have derived before. Now, we want to solve for the reciprocal of this, so take the reciprocal on both sides, multiply both sides by gamma of 1 minus x, and you are going to be left with sine of pi times x over pi gamma of 1 minus x integrated with respect to x. And at this point, basically, the headaches really started because this is where I already made a mistake, kind of. Okay, this right here is already where it's going to go wrong after the next step. This first step is valid, but then I thought to myself, well, the, the easiest thing you could do now is interpret this as an integral, okay? You are going to get an integral from zero to infinity, sine of pi times x over pi times, okay, gamma function in its integral representation, we have derived this before, it's nothing but an integral from zero to infinity of, well, um, let's say t to the argument minus one, okay, that's negative x, e to the negative t, integrate with respect to t, and then with respect to x. Yeah, easy enough, right? That's something we can certainly do that shouldn't pose any problems. That's what I thought, and that is just where everything went wrong. And I really couldn't resolve this problem right here. It was something that I just couldn't resolve. Why is it a problem? You are going to see in a minute. Now, what we could do, we could actually integrate with respect to x at first, okay? This right here is going to converge to some finite value, so why not Fubini this shit right here, as I like to say? And then let's see what we actually are going to get. So this right here is an integral, integral over t at first, from zero to infinity of e to the negative t over pi times an integral from zero to infinity of sine of pi times x times t to the negative x. Remember, we can rewrite stuff like this as nothing but e to the negative x ln of t, integrated with respect to x at first, and then with respect to t. There are things you can do right now, okay? You can find the antiderivative of this thing. This is not hard, but this is a problem for another video in the series. What I would like to do is to simply use the Laplace transform of sine of a times t, for example. Okay, this right here just screams for Laplace transform. Okay, we, we have e to the something term, we have our s right here basically, which is nothing but natural log of t. We have some unknown constant right here, some, some known constant, pi is indeed a known constant, and yet this just screams for Laplace transform. So remember, this integral right here is basically the Laplace transform, I'm going to put it here, of sine, and let's say a times t, of s is going to give us a over a squared plus s squared. I have made several videos on Laplace transforms. a is nothing but our pi and our s in this case is the natural log of t. Now this is going to give us an integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative t over pi times the Laplace transform of sine of pi times x with respect to the natural log of t and then integrate it with respect to t in this case. So um, yeah, now we can plug all the stuff into here. S is the natural log and a is our pi, leaving us with an integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t over pi. And then we are going to get pi, okay? Pi and one over pi is going to cancel out. That seems pretty dope, okay? Then pi squared plus natural log of t squared integrated with respect to t. And overall, this thing is going to evaluate to integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t over pi squared plus natural log squared of t integrated with respect to t. Wait a second. No, 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 daddy. That's so anticlimactic right here, okay? <laughs> if you compare the original thing we wanted to prove to what we actually got out of here, okay? That's, that's not too much of a huge difference, but <laughs> E is missing right here, okay? And this is just the main problem right here, okay? This thing has been an open problem to me up until Monday, and on Monday I got a few ideas 
which got inspired by Ramanujan and Colonel Jovan Valian. I hope I pronounced your name correctly, the guy who published almost impossible sums and integrals, blah blah blah, integrals and sums. And yeah, um, <laughs> this E right here is missing. And for fuck's sake, I didn't know what was wrong. It didn't make any sense to me. And like I said, we had convergence problems here. This step right here was not valid because our Laplace transform right here consists of two cases basically. Our integral de definition of our gamma only converges for the real part of x being less than 1. Okay, so we have a problem right here with the interval from 1 to infinity because you would get for example gamma of negative 2 somewhere in the interval and that ain't good. So this right here was the main problem. Okay. And I hope you can see why this bugged me a bit, because I was actually able to fallaciously calculate the error term right here, but the E was missing. And I just couldn't call it quits at this point. It was just so annoying, to be honest. I was nearly there, just one thing was missing. And trust me, I was trying casework and stuff, but I couldn't get anywhere. Um, and Cedric, for example, a friend of mine, said, yeah, why not use the series expansion for 1 over gamma of x? Because this thing right here is completely analytical in the whole complex plane. So, so even if you have poles right here, that's okay, because if gamma explodes to infinity, 1 over gamma goes to 0. So that really wouldn't pose a problem right here. Um, but <laughs> doing this using the series expansion right here, I, I haven't even de derived this up until now on this channel. It's a fucking mess. And yeah, it's, I didn't know where to start, honestly, and he got stuck too. Everyone got stuck. Not even the people on Mastic Exchange could me help at this point. So yeah, this is where the journey starts. I gave you a little introduction, and we are going to go through my whole thought process in the next two or three videos. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and recommend the channel. Also, by those teachers I created, avoid positivity is the best thing you can actually do. Stay negative, my boys. And up until next video, have a reciprocal of the gamma function day. See ya.